Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to my Oblica and Biob update video. So I wanted to make this update video because of course I've had my Biob for a little while now, but I've also had my Monstera Oblica for a little while now. So there are some updates, but I also want to replant the orb today and kind of rescape it. Now I do actually have some form of plan this time as to how I'm going to plant it. So hopefully it might go a little bit smoother than last time. Not only that, but afterwards I would like to say one or two things about, you know, what I've found about the biob what I like, what I don't like, generally my feedback on how it's been to have a biop. So if you want to hear my thoughts on that or anything else I just said sounds good to you, then please keep on watching. So I'm going to start with a quick update on my oblique because now is the best time to do it because obviously the oblique is coming out of the orb and I'm actually able to show you, you know, in reasonable detail what the oblique now looks like because when it is sat in the biop, because the biop is round, it's actually very difficult to, you know, take photographs, take videos, just generally get a good look at the plant. So when I first got the oblique, it wasn't in the best of states, shall we say. I think it had two leaves. If I remember rightly, it had two leaves and the leaves were kind of yellowing around the edge. There was one or two brown spots as well. I think the tip of the leaf had a brown spot and then there was like a random patch on one of the leaves that had a brown spot. It generally wasn't looking very good. Not only that, but the holes in the leaves weren't very big. And to be honest, a lot of people were actually telling me that it was an Adansonii because it just didn't have enough holes in it. So that's kind of the condition that we were working with when I originally got my oblique. Now, let me tell you, this Monstera Oblica looks like a completely different plant now. Like there is just zero comparison. It has several new leaves. It, it generally speaking, it just won't stop growing. It seems to really, really, really love the conditions that it's currently in. The old leaf, well, one of the old leaves are still kind of hanging on there, but I honestly don't think it's gonna be too much longer till it just drops off and we have nothing but new, more, how should we say, oblique style leaves and not the old, you know, the old old Adansonii style leaves. So I don't know how much longer that leaf is going to be there, but I don't suspect it's going to be there for that long. You probably can't see from this footage that I'm showing you as well, but there are actually three new leaves on the way, which is pretty impressive considering it's already grown several new leaves. So that's just amazing. I haven't had any runners from this plant since I actually planted it into the bio, but I honestly think that's because the plant is happy enough to just continue its growth, which means we have hit the textbook level conditions that an oblique needs to grow in, mainly because it's growing so fast. So I cannot tell you how happy that makes me. Just to be serious for one second, this plant, like this plant just makes my heart so happy. It sounds ridiculous, but I am just so blessed and so proud to have this plant growing in my house and to see it thrive, especially to see the condition of it now from what it was before. I'm just, honestly, I'm I'm just over the moon. Like I don't see this plant as a plant. I actually see it as more of a pet. It's really strange. I have such an insane level of attachment to this plant. It's just not even funny. Since I did the Monstera Adansonii versus Oblica video, it would be fair to say that the price of Oblica, I'm pretty sure has damn near trebled since that video. Coincidence? Nah. But I want you guys to know that this plant is not for sale. Like, I, I'm just not going to sell it. It is mine. I don't even want to sell pieces of it. I want this thing to grow to be as big and as beautiful as possible. This is still a piece of history to me, and I absolutely love, love, love this plant so much. So before I go into my thoughts on the biob and generally how it's been and what I've experienced, I would like to take you guys through the rescaping of my biob first. So when I got the biob, it was very impromptu and I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to plant in it. I didn't know what would go in it. I didn't know anything before I filmed that video. And I think I made that pretty clear at the time. I'm going to plant this biob up now. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know what the arrangement is. I don't know how many of these plants I'm going to use, all the rest. So this time is a little bit different and I've actually actually planned pretty much kind of how I want things to look. So I have bought a few things. I've bought a couple of ornaments and a couple of plants, but really not as many plants as you might think. If this is an orb here, my general plan is to have like a backdrop 
and then an obliquer in front and then a couple of ornaments to like you know accentuate the situation shall we say so generally speaking the orb will be reasonably sparse so what i plan to do is add follows so the first thing i picked up was a new ornament for the biob because i just wanted to go with a certain vibe and you will see it will all make sense in due course but the first ornament i picked up was kind of like this i want to say it's like a tree root type situation going on only the cool thing about this tree root situation is that it actually splits into three separate chunks so if i need to widen the tree kind of structure at the back of the orb i can do that or conversely if i find that it's too bulky i can remove parts of you know the tree root and make the display you know smaller or just generally mold it to what i need it to be so that's really really handy i will leave the links for everything i've kind of put in the orb by the way down below if you know it's something that is linkable if i haven't just walked into a shop and bought it i will leave all the links down below so my second ornament okay just just stay with me okay my second ornament is a <laughs> It's a T-Rex skull ornament, right? Now, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, it's ridiculous. But it's not ridiculous, and I aim to prove that today, that it's not ridiculous and it actually looks amazing. I'll very quickly explain it. So I was surfing Amazon looking for all these ornaments of, you know, all this new stuff to put in my bio orb, and I kind of, you know, it got a bit out of control because then I found in my suggested a T-Rex head, and I was like, oh my god, that is awesome. It's a T-Rex. It's going in there. That needs to happen, right? Which is fair enough. Except also, if you kind of think about the head of a T-Rex, now stay with me, I realize this is a bit of a stretch, but if you think about the head shape, the skull, that's what I mean, the skull of the T-Rex, the way that the eye sockets are and just generally like the holes in the skull kind of reminded me of an oblique. So I was kind of like, okay, let's do some kind of Jurassic Park terrarium-esque kind of thing. So that's kind of what the T-Rex head is for. Now stay with me because honestly, I think it's gonna look brilliant. Now, the last ornament I bought, or ornaments I bought, were kind of a backup plan, to be honest with you. I don't know if I'm going to need to use these or not. In my mind, it works as kind of like a, not a, like a fairy path, but it just works to section off some of the plants. So I don't know how useful they're going to be or if I'm going to use them. But I've bought these like really ratchet, gnarly, plasticky, fake pebbles with fake moss on them basically is what I've bought. And my plan is to just sit and dot them around the soil, maybe dot them around the base of some plants if I feel that it needs it. I don't really know. Last time I planted up the orb, there was an awful lot of brown where all the coir was. So I kind of wanted a little bit more green. So that's kind of why I bought the fake green. But don't worry, there is plenty of real green. So we will move on to the plants that are going inside the orb. So the first thing I've actually bought is some frog moss. Now, this is kind of the real green part of the orb, and this I intend to be kind of like my padding for around the edges to frame the oblique with and to generally frame any of the other plants in the orb. I also have a random fern. I do not know what type of fern it is, so if you are aware of what type of fern it is, please leave you know that information in the comments because I have no clue. It didn't have a label on it. I just needed a small kind of terrarium plant, so I have a random fern going in there as well. I also have bought, I think I've bought two different bromeliads and I bought three of each type of bromeliad. So the first bromeliad, I do not know the name. I cannot pronounce the name for the life of me, so I will put it up on the screen right now. But I just got them because I thought they would go with the whole Jurassic kind of park vibe a little bit. I don't know. But they looked like they would go with my theme that I had going on inside my little head. So I bought three of those. So we'll see how many I need to use today because honestly, I'm not sure how much I'm going to need. In addition to that, I've bought another bromeliad, which I think is called a bromeliad fireball or something like that. It's kind of green and then it has like red in the center. But mine at the minute aren't exactly red in the center. So I don't really know if it's a light thing or if it's a maturity thing or anything like that. So if again, if you know the answer to that, please write it down below because I haven't got a clue what I've bought. Oh, and the last plant I bought is this tiny little green Fetonia plant because, well, apparently it's the plant that you're just supposed to put in a terrarium, like everyone puts one in terrarium. So I thought, hey, bromeliads, Fetonia, done. In my mind, this works, guys. I don't know, but in my mind, this definitely works. So just a very quick word on the mix that I'm going to use in the orb. So last time always told me that I should be using pure coir in the bottom of the orb. So I did a block of coir and that was it. That was my entire substrate. I didn't do anything else. I've made the soil medium, the exact soil medium that I actually made in last week's video. So my Aroid soil mix video. Right, I think, I think it might be time to scape the biob. 
I'm going to show you this footage as well in the same way that I showed you last time because it is just too difficult to plant these things with, you know, my gloves on, with a mic on and everything like that. If I need to walk away and get something, then I need to be able to just do so. So unfortunately, you will be seeing a sped up kind of time-lapsed version of what I'm doing. Also, of course, you can't see the front of the orb because I need to see it when I plant it. I'm very sorry. I know that doesn't make for the best viewing, but honestly, it's one of these things where you just need to get it right. So I apologize for that. I'm sorry if it's not the best viewing situation. So without further ado, let's scape the orb. So needless to say, you know, I think that my plan kind of worked. I don't even think that the um, the T-Rex skull even looks ratchet in any way. I actually think it looks superb. I think it sets the whole thing off. I love the bromeliads. Obviously, I ended up using all the moss. I used double the amount of bromeliads, so I have one spare of each bromeliad left. So I apologize for not getting the best footage possible of the orb. I've kind of done my best, but if the light in the orb isn't on, it's a struggle to get footage. Not only that, but the lights are now dimmer, which I will go over in just a second. But I think we can all agree it looks pretty awesome. This is like this is fantastic. Of course, there are plants in there that look unique and interesting, but really, I want the obliquid to be the focal point. I need it to still have, you know, all the room it needs, but still have a beautiful backdrop. So, here is the finished thing. So, what are my thoughts on the biob after having it for, you know, I don't even know how long I've had it, maybe two, three months. I'm not actually sure how long I've had it, but I've had it long enough to give you an opinion and, you know, my thoughts so far on how it's been for me. So obviously a Monstera oblique is probably one of the hardest plants to grow. And of course the biob is growing it. So that is a good thing. I haven't had any problems with the orb per se. It's more about features that I wish that the orb had, but it doesn't have, if that makes any sense. So 
at one point I think I had a little bit of a problem with the oblique yellowing a little bit like a lot of the leaves were starting to go yellow now I think that was a combination of problems I think one that was just due to the fact that always recommends a mixture of pure coir and that doesn't hold any nutrients so really the plant wasn't getting any additional nutrients from the soil at all it was just getting watered and it was getting its humidity I did find a really good way of fertilizing the plant um, what I actually did was I got kind of like a super small cup and I put maybe three drops of fertilizer in and maybe just about this much water and I kind of gave the oblique kind of like a shot of fertilizer and honestly that did the trick quite well because obviously I didn't want to saturate the soil because it was yellowing and I was thinking oh is the soil too wet or you know what is it it wasn't necessarily the sole answer to the problem though because I did actually find and I found this with nearly every plant inside the orb basically over time I ended up removing plants from the orb one by one because I found that it was too bright for the plants which was really sad because I had to remove you know the queen anthurium the Doriaki hybrid that is still recovering it's it's not doing very well and I think that is just because for those types of anthuriums it was just too much light I mean for the last month there has only been an oblique in the center of the orb and nothing else so what I did to solve the light issue was I actually basically I put black tape over 50% of the lights in the biob so you can't really see the difference but you kind of can if you know what the lights were like before if you have a biob and you have our that are more on the rarer side in there if you find they're yellowing try taping up you know 50% of the light so every other light on the biob see if that actually helps I think those were the main things that I actually wanted to highlight about the orb the rest of what I have to say is probably honestly kind of feature requests so the first thing that I would love always to come out with if they ever release say a new biob the first thing I would love for them to do is to actually have a readout on the humidity levels in the orb because the only way that I found out the humidity level in the orb was to actually stick in you know like an external hygrometer the things that are all over my house basically I just stuck one of those in there and I left it there a good you know couple of days to get a gauge on the humidity inside the orb but what would be really nice is if there was a built-in you know readout so I could just see what that humidity level was but not only that in addition to that I would like to be able to set the humidity as well because that's just what you want isn't it? if you're keeping rare plants in there to be able to set the humidity would be super super handy as well in addition to setting the humidity I would also love 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 to be able to set the brightness of the bulbs so obviously then I wouldn't have to tape up the biob or anything of the sort I think I think the biob's day night cycle is actually 12 hours so it is 12 hours on 12 hours off and it'll kind of fade between the two so it doesn't just go like on and off it'll fade but really that's not really quite enough for plants I feel like plants need about 14 to 16 hours of light a day so it would have been really nice to customize that and to customize the level of lighting it's okay that I've taped up the lights but you know what I mean like it would be nice if I didn't have to do that all in all I do still recommend the biob it's doing more than a good enough job of keeping the oblique alive so until such time where that changes or of course the oblique actually outgrows the biob because that will probably happen I will continue to leave it in this orb until I find an alternative solution on that note I do actually have another terrarium inside the flat and it is kind of awesome it hasn't been planted yet it hasn't been scaped yet it hasn't even been switched on yet so that is like a little bit of time away before that is set up but that's kind of my next project along with a couple of other things that are coming into the flat that aren't actually plant related I'm sorry for the massive mystery surrounding that but honestly all will become apparent when I actually get things sorted out I get the plants that I want to go in it and I scape it properly and then I will film a video in the same way that I filmed my bio video and I will show you exactly what is going on with that so I guess that's it for this Monstera Oblica slash biob replant rescape video slash review of biob slash I don't know hopefully I'll come up with a simplistic title because that is way too long thank you very very much for watching this update video guys if you have any questions at all about the biob or you want to share your experience with the biob or tips you found anything at all if you want to comment on the oblique the condition that's in what it was in before if you'd like to request any videos on the oblique I don't really know what that would be but if you'd like to request any videos on that then please do leave that in the comments as well any video requests in general please feel free to leave them in the comments because I will sure to take a look and if you like this video 
below, then please feel free to leave a like down below. Similarly, if you'd like to see any more of these videos or any other videos I have on my channel, feel free to subscribe. And in addition to that, if you'd like to see updates on any of my house plants, then please feel free to follow me on Instagram at Let's Wet My Plants. Have a great Friday. Bye.